Okay, that video cut off um, after 15 minutes. I didn't realize that was going to happen. So um, this is part two of counting homomorphisms. So in that last one, we were looking at D16, the hedral group on uh, for a 16 regular 16 gon into Z12, group of integers modulo 12. So we know that the image of so we have in D16 and Z12, we have the homomorphism B is completely determined by where it sends the generator the reflection and where it sends the generator of flips. Because the image of R must divide the order of R, that force, as we saw in the previous video, that 16 times phi of R must be equal to 0 mod 12. Doing the math, there are four possible choices of phi of R then. The 16 times 0 is 0, 16 times 3 is 0, 16 times 6 is 0, and 16 times 9 is 0. So there's four choices for where R can go. Similar By similar um, reasoning, there's two choices for where we can send F. So there would be 4 times 2, so there would be 8 choices for the homomorphism for phi. But that's not necessarily true. We have to check the other condition. Remember in DN, the following relation must uh, hold. So f times r is r to the n minus 1 times f. Of course, this is equivalent to this is equivalent to many other different ways to see this, like r, f, r. If I multiply on the left by r, r times r to the n minus 1 would just be the identity. So we get this. There's many equivalent ones, but we're going to look at this one. So, so since f times r equals r to the 15 times f, then applying phi to both sides, we have phi of f times r equals phi of r to the 15 times f. So that means phi of f plus phi of r. By the property of homomorphisms, this is true, right? We can split the product. Recall phi of ab equals phi of a, phi of b. But the operation between a and b here is just in the group here, and then the operation between phi of A and phi of B is addition. So, follow that. And then on the right side here, phi of R to the 15th plus phi of F. Now, important point here is that we would like to just think, can I cancel the phi of F's on both sides? No, definitely no. For instance, if we had a times x equals y times a. I can't just multiply. This can't cancel the a's. I can multiply on the left by a inverse. If this was an abelian group, if this was setting was an abelian group, then this would be the same as that. And in that case, I can multiply on the left by a inverse and a inverse, and in a sense, canceling the a's, and then we get x equals y. So are we in an abelian setting? Yes, this is an abelian group. So we can move the phi of f, oh, this should be a phi of r. We can move, we can move, change these locations. So this becomes phi of r plus phi of f equals phi of r to the 15th plus phi of f. And now we have legal cancelization. Since we're in the group of 12, we can cancel there. And then we're just left with phi of r equals phi of r to the 15th. So phi of r equals phi of r to the 15th. So subtracting phi of r from both sides to get 0 equals phi of r to the 15th plus negative phi of r. You just subtracted phi of r from both sides. So by the properties, again, of homomorphisms, phi of a times phi of b is phi of ab. This is, on the right side, we get phi of r to the 15th. Um, note that this is equal to phi of r to the negative 1 by another property of homomorphisms. So we get phi of r to the 15th times phi of times r to the 15th times r to the minus 1. So this is just phi of r to the 14th. And by the property of so then of homomorphisms, this is 14 phi of r. So now we need to check 
do all four of these choices that we had before still hold here? For instance, is 0 times 14 0? Yes. Is 3 times 14 0? No. Um, is 6 times 14 0? Yes. Is 9 times 14 0? No. Uh, now, if you're wondering if I'm doing quick math like 14, no. I know that 14 is congruent to 2 mod 12, so I might as well make this more simple equation. 0 equals 2 times v of r. So now it's a lot simpler. Is 2 times 0, 0? Yes. And z12? Is, four, is, uh, is 2 times 3, 0? No. 2 times 3 is not 0 in z12. So this is not allowed. Is 2 times 6, 0? Yes. Is 2 times 9, 0? No, 2 times 9 is 18. That's not 0. So of the four choices that we had before, we've eliminated two of them. So we conclude the answer to this question. How many homomorphisms are there from D16 to Z12? There are four homomorphisms. Given by the two places, we can send R in the two places we can send F. So that's the nature of that kind of question. And now let's look at different types of questions. Uh, how about if I have the same domain, but I'm looking for homomorphisms into an infinite group. How about the integers on the plus? So I'm not going to solve this for you, but I'm going to give you something to think about. Um, a homomorphism must send elements of finite order to elements of finite order. All of the elements in here have finite order in D16. And the integers just on their plus. <laughs> there's not a lot of elements of finite order. So there's not a lot of choices of where to send R and where to send F. Like, how many different possible places can it go? Well, it's up to you to think about how many elements in here have finite order. For example, the 7, the order of 7. Can I add 7 to itself? How many times before I get the identity in here? The identity in here is 0. You know, this is never going to equal 0. 7 has infinite order. Okay. How about if we change... So that's my end of my hint for that one. If we change it to other things, for instance, like the rationals uh, minus 0, that's definitely a group under multiplication. Definitely, that's a group. So now we need to think to ourselves, what are the elements of finite order in this group? I mean, how many possible elements could there be? Um, we need for you to think about that. Again, this is a multiplicative group, so 7, you know, 7 times 7, 7 times 7. Is there any number of ways I can multiply 7 by itself before I get the identity in here, and what is the identity in Q uh, as a multiplicative group? Q without zero, the rationals without zero, that is. So that's things to think about. And then, of course, we can reverse the maps, too, and start thinking about how many homomorphisms do we have going in the other direction. You know? Identity goes to identity, so we know we're zero. Or wherever you think the identity in here is, it zero or is it one? <laughs> um, it's definitely zero. But consider that. Um, I think I'll stop talking and let you start thinking about counting homomorphisms. All right.